G'day guys, how you going? So today what we're going to be looking at is continuing our RPA videos, but we're looking at the food test RPA today. And I thought I'd start with a little bit of a food related joke. So get ready for this one, um, because there was some breaking news. Uh, and that's that there was an explosion last weekend at the French cheese factory. Um, but there was actually nothing left but debris. good joke. Uh, anyways, so back to the main thing. Uh, is what we have here is RPA, um, classic RPA structure. That's Brie, by the way. That's the debris that was left. Um, what are we investigating? What is the method? Uh, and what would you expect to see? So let's start with the need to know. These are things you need to know going into the food test RPA. Um, we need to know that some of the components that are in food, such as protein, right? Protein is in the food that we eat. Carbohydrates are in the food that we eat. Um, lipids or fats are in food that we eat. And luckily last, we often have a little bit of sugar in the food we eat. So these are the four things that we need to understand are inside food and we can test for them. So we need to be able to test for proteins, for carbohydrates, for lipids and for sugars, right? the four things that we need to test for. So how do we do that? Um, well, what are we investigating first? Um, and we are literally investigating what nutrients are present in the food that we eat. And there are two variables that we're gonna be looking at. The independent or the one we change is going to be the type of food we are testing. Example, cheese, egg, bread, whatever it is we're looking at. And the dependent variable, the variable that we measure is if a particular nutrient is actually present in the food through the tests. And I'm about to run you through those four four tests that you need to remember and be able to do, all right? So here we go, um, test for protein, all right? So to test for protein, to get big muscles like these people in the back, um, we use what's called a burette test. Um, all you do is you add a few drops of the burette solution to the food, all right? Um, and then literally, if it stays blue, which is the color of the burette solution, no protein is present. If it turns purple or lilac, protein is present, okay? And this is exactly what it looks like. The blue one on the left there means no protein, and this purpley lilac one means that protein is present. All right, well, what about starch? Now we've done this if you've watched the enzymes RPA. So you add a few drops of iodine to the food. If it stays orange, no starch is present, right? That's just the color of the iodine. Um, if it turns a blue black color, then yes, starch is present. And you can see that in this food here, right? You can see this black color just under that iodine now that I've faded the background. Uh, and that means that starch is present if it's that blue black color. Okay, all right, next, uh, lipids, right? To look for lipids is a little bit tricky, but all you need to do is crush the food. So crush your crisps or whatever it is you're eating. I said crisps, not chips, I was very good. Uh, and, add a, and mix it up with a little bit of water. Add a few drops of Sudan 3 to the food and water solution. Um, if it goes orange evenly, like it just turns orange, no lipids are present. But if you've got these like dark red layers in it, it means that lipids are present in the particular food, right? And to show you what that looks like, have a look here on the right. You can see this one has those dark red layers, which means lipids are present or oils and fats are present. Whereas this one's just universally orange, which means that there's no uh, lipids present. Uh, and lucky last is sugars. Now this one has an extra step. We crush the food and we mix it with water. Um, so we've got a solution. We add a few drops of Benedict's solution to the food and water. And then we heat it up in a water bath up to 75 degrees. It needs to warm up to see this test. If it stays blue, no sugars are present uh, in the particular in the food. Um, whereas if it changes color to green, orange or red, then sugars are present in that food, right? And this is what it looks like just here. Blue there on the left with no sugars, your green, your orange and your reds mean that sugars are present, okay? So to summarize, what would you expect to see? This is each of the tests, literally what you need to know. Protein, burette solution, it will turn lilac, which means proteins are present. Starch, iodine solution, it turns blue black if um, starch is present. In lipids, Sudan 3 solution, you get these dark red layers mean lipids are present. And lucky last sugar, Benedict solution, um, and heat it up. And if you get a color change to green, orange, or red, it means sugars are present. All right, guys, thank you very much. Have a good one.